I'm it. I'm the man with the plan here. I am the co-owner and distiller of Oakhurst Spirits. I was born and raised in San Diego, but 2016 was the year the whiskey god said, we want you to make whiskey. We've been coming to Oakhurst for many years, coming up to Yosemite, we like the, the whole Sierras, we like the Owen Valley, we like the whole area. So we finally said, okay, let's go ahead and do this. So we purchased the building up here and moved the business, and here we are, making whiskey in Oakhurst. It hasn't seen the light of day for over a year. All right, do I have a thief? I think I have it. So, this is 89 proof. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is actually very nice. Remember that? Hmm. Nice. I grind, I distill. I uh, make a mash all in one day, and I try to do at least three of those a week. I'll do four grain bourbons, or I'll do, right now I'm doing a run of two grain bourbons. Um, I do rye. I'm kind of excited because I have a, a new type of, I bought a uh, rye from a, a McAdams rye, and I'm kind of looking forward to those. But you have to, when you do those things, you're looking at a couple years for the actual finished product. So, I mean, you can do taste intermittently and everything and see how things are coming along and you go, okay. But you have to be really careful because I've done things where at six months it was like, oh man, this is horrible. But then a year later, it's like, whoa, you know, everything changed. So you have to be really careful about, you know, you know judging what you're doing in term or intermittently. And you can't judge things, you know, by right away. Six months, you might do a taste. Eight months, you might do a taste, and that even the, even that two months, things are going to change in that term, in that time frame. So a lot of times, it's, it's just you have to wait. It's just infinite patience is all it is. A craft whiskey, you never know what you're going to get. You're always going to get something different all the time. The barrels are different, the runs are different. Everything's different because you're not making, you know, 500,000 gallons at a whack. You know, you're making 15, 20 gallons. I like the open fermentation process because, first of all, it makes your tanks easier to clean. And uh, second of all, it gives you, um, after the yeast is done, there's a lot of uh, bacteria and wild yeast in the air up here. So it gives you, um, uh, when it in inoculates your, your mash, it gives you what are, what are known as long chain alcohol chemical chemicals, chemicals. And when you distill, and they stay in the barrel a while, it forms different, what are called esters. So people will drink different whiskeys and they'll get a butterscotch flavor, they'll get a strawberry flavor, they'll get a maple flavor. And those are all results of uh, infections from bacteria in, in your mash. So it gives your whiskey more complexity, it makes it more wild, you know? When you're in the brewing world, you everything has to be really clean because the mash or the wort is your product. So if it gets infected or anything, it gives you all flavors, and that's not good for a beer maker or even a wine maker. But for a whiskey maker, you're not drinking the, the mash, you're drinking the alcohol. And that's what you're after, is the different flavors from the alcohol. And then different barrels do different things too. I remember the first time I, I cracked the rye barrel, it was like, these amazing flavors came from this one barrel. Mm -hmm. So you never know what's gonna happen with the barrel too. The wood is, is always the overpowering flavors in, in the uh, in the whiskeys because you always get the, the caramel flavors, you get the vanilla, you get the um, the tannins. So you get those flavors will come into the into the whiskeys, but you want to also have the flavors of the grains too. You don't. It's like I don't want to be making stuff that just tastes like wood. You know that I want to have the, the want to have the grain flavors in there, and that's the where the balance of the barrel is. Is that it modifies those grain flavors so that they all become a combination of flavors. You don't want anything to be overpowered. A lot of people will like, oh, I like it really dark or really charcoaly or something like that, which is fine, but, um, but you want to try to balance your flavors. And that's what is important to me, that things have the flavors of the grains, but they also have the flavor of the barrel too. One of the things I always did not enjoy about bourbons is if there's a lot of corn in them, they get kind of oily. Um, because when you when you look at the ferment on a bourbon, I mean, there's not this much oil sitting on top of the of the ferment. And if you're doing big corn bourbons, then that oil will 
that oil flavor will transfer into the bourbon. And I've really liked that. So my bourbons are more cut down. They have, uh, there's more, I'm like right at the 50 or 60% corn level, 51% or 60% corn level. And then I'll go with a, a rye or a wheat. And uh, so it gives a little bit of spice on the back end. And that's what I really like. So you have the sweet of the bourbon, but you don't pick up that oil flavor. And then you have a little, little pop of the rye on the back. And then the, the wheat will give you a little bit of sweet too. The grain, the wheat and the, and the corn are a little bit sweeter grains. The corn and the wheat come from the valley and that's predominantly the grains. The rye comes from north of, of uh, Sacramento because it's too hot to grow rye in the valley here. The flavors for my, my vodkas and gin are local flavors too. Uh, and also, I have a farmer down in Clovis. He comes and he picks up my spent mash and he takes it back to Clovis and feeds it to his chickens and cows. And um, I get eggs from him. So there's no waste there. So everything gets reused. Wow, I lost a chunk. So what happens is, you ever heard of the angel share? It evaporates, right? Yeah. But there's also a thing called the devil's cut. I've heard that too, and I can't remember what it is. So what the devil's cut is, the barrel will soak up mm. about 6% of your whiskey. You could lose about a third of your whiskey. I do distillery tours, and people love that. They love to see the distillery. And it's not that much of it. I mean, it's just a little tiny distillery. You know, it's not like a great big huge one, but I think it's more personal because they get to actually see, they can stick their face in the mash and they don't see a big, huge steel tank and they're not talking to a tour guide, they're talking to the distiller. You know, I can answer the questions about how the still works, what are you looking at, what are the little windows in the still for, you know, that, so they get to ask those questions of a guy who's actually doing the work. What I like most about being the craft distiller is the freedom and the ability to create and the moment of creation, when you actually take the bottle and you fill the bottle up and you look at your whiskey and you go, I created this, I made this. This did not exist until I did this. I'm not bound by corporate you know, ethos or I don't have a boss or I don't have a, um, you know, somebody telling me, oh, you, you, this doesn't taste right or something like that. Drinking whiskey is fun. It truly is. I want people to enjoy it. I want people to go, oh, this was really cool. This is really a simple thing. I mean, I came in, I had fun, I sat down, I bullshit it with the bartender. You know, he sold me this stuff here, I enjoyed it, it was a good time. And that's what I want people to do. I want people to have a good time with it. I want them to share it with their friends. I don't want them sitting in the dark drinking the whiskey. I want them to share it, have some good food with it, enjoy it. You know, that's the, that's the whole point of life, is to enjoy it.